And here we are back in Jeff's workshop once again. Hey. And this week it's all changed, isn't it, Jeff? Because it's been very busy moving things around. This big old Mitchell lathe is now out here in extension. And what was here, in this area here, the old miller, is now in the back of the main workshop. So let's go through here. Yeah, yeah. Go through here, Jeff, and we'll see what you've been doing. Hello, everybody out there. Yeah. And there's a the miller there. Not too blurry, I hope. And in addition to that, the Honda and its little bench. workbench on wheels has been wheeled out and it's now over here. And where it used to be, if we spin round, da -da 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 -da, which is here, we've now got just a space full of junk. Well, not junk, but parts. And if I put the, the uh, tripod down a second, just um, wait a minute or two. Okay, so put the tripod down. Oh, there's lots of noise. And you see there, lots of space. And what's that space for, Jeff? Why have you moved? The Mitchell lathe out there and the old miller in here. A lot of work to do that. So what's it all about? That well, that there. Yes. Gives. There. Uh, it gives. It just gives me better working room. Right. But Sometimes on camera when you're trying to explain it, it's yeah, difficult. Yeah. You've got to be actually here. In well, the, the, vicinity well, the to main understand. reason is we go back. I can main... work around this. Oh yes, you can work around your Honda. There's, there's a, another so reason, isn't there? There's another there's reason. There's more room in that extension yes. now between. There's Between. a bench out there yes. that will be coming in here. Yes. We that had a bench. little disaster with the pit. Oh, oh yes, yes the, yes, the pit of doom. Yeah. Now, the pit of doom lives down there. Under there. Underneath there. There are some, I think it's railway sleepers down there. and. Uh, it, it's and, pit boards and yeah. they were replaced two years ago. And yes. they're, they're rotten. They're, they're all gone? They're broken. They're broken. And it broke as you were moving a two ton or one no, ton? It, no, we rolled it over, there's a sheet of eight steel on all the wood. Yes. But when I lifted it to check, yes. I put my foot on one of the boards and it just literally snapped. <sighs> I know there's people out there now who's going to be saying, you should, well, it shouldn't be that heavy. Yeah, I've got well, one uh, for you. Machinery can be quite heavy. I mean, this thing here is what, a ton and a half and the middle's no doubt about the same. It probably was just a bad board. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you've fixed that now. Before have you? I put a lot of weight on it now, yeah. I have a beam out there. I'm going to put some brackets at each end of the pit. Or steel beam. And, and drop yeah. like a beam just halfway to support along it. Yeah, yeah. to support it. Support, well, because that will have, it's coming out eventually. And oh, it's going to be Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So, but the whole point is to make more room because there's going to be your frame jig coming in here. Well, that can go, no, that can go well, in there. Oh, that's going to go in there. Okay. And it gives you plenty of room each side to work on it. And the reason why the frame jig's got to come indoors is because you want to finish well, making the frame, okay. making this frame here. A bit blurry, I guess. I want to finish that. That's going to have to be, um, the original frame's going to be cut in half and welded to the front of this. It's going to be That's slugged and bracketed. Yeah. yeah, and then you can move on to my frame, which is currently well, well, I can either do looking that very one. despondent over there Not in parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so that'll be done one day. And uh, in the meantime, I noticed you were sawing some aluminium up there, I'm just making lots of noise. So let's go and look at that and see what's going on. I'm okay, Jeff, so I brought you two presents today. I brought you that. Tokiko four pot caliper that I rebuilt a long, a long time ago, and and uh, hopefully you can use that new project along well, with the it, forks. It that came will, off, but we yeah. need another one. Yeah, I need another one. <laughs> I've got two, but I can't find another one. Yeah. That was blasted and rebuilt to suit the drag bike, and since I had just one need for one caliper, I didn't bother doing the other one. Um, so yeah, I need to find the other one and uh, bring that one around, and that's to fit the forks we see there, which I just brought, which are off my 127 cubic inch drag bike. Don't need them anymore, so. You got use of them. Can I ask you? This yes. is going to be a good question. What yes. are you going to use? Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I've no idea yet. Right. Don't worry about it. So, um, also, I found in my shed of doom, as it were, in in stock in stores, these, and I can't remember where they're from, but I think you might be able to use them. So I'll just push that over there. And I think, I think they're from a fixer or a fire blade. I can't remember which. That's that's the matching rear. For th for those two there, yeah, yeah. So for in case those you need. two what? For, for those two calipers, uh, sorry, those two uh, discs that I brought you the other day. Um, and these are something new. Oh, these are for you. These are. I've had them ages, I've not known where they came from or what I use them for, but they're uh, service to requirements now, so if you can make use of them. What the hell? They're pretty good, Nick, them. I think they're for five blade, but don't quote me on that. And I can't remember where they're from. I thought I was going to use them on something and I didn't in the end, so they just ended up being. Um, Put to one side, put back in stores for another day, 
and since you're now in need of some discs for a project, I thought you might need them, or maybe they'll come in handy, well, I don't you, know. I don't know, you better off work out what you're going to oh. do with yours before oh. we go. I know what I'm going to do with mine, it won't be using these, Oh. So, so don't worry about that. Right. Don't you worry about that, I'll be using new stuff, probably EBCs or something like that. Oops. Yeah. There goes my camera. There goes the 300s. Ah. Right. Yeah, but I thought the main problem you had was the. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't. The, the PCD for the mounts. Well, if you use them calipers with these fork legs, them are, they need to be ideally they need to be three tens yeah. so that yeah. all the okay. geometry well, it's not fits. There. It's not there. Um, but we three hundreds. It might be okay. But we still have over here. Just pause a while, and we've got these, which I was going to use on the front wheel of my new project. But in fact, I could use something else. So these are well, bigger. Well, no, I could still mind you though. If you're yeah. making caliper mounts, yes, well, we, no problem. I haven't started yet, but it won't be using those. Yeah, you can say, they're uh, bigger. Three tens. Yeah, they're three tens. So you can use those, but you will have to these, make a mount. These would work with hubs. Yes, you need to sort your hubs out. I have got a set of discs that will fit the well, the five bolt fitting. Mm -hmm. Off a of Kawasaki, but they're used and there's. You're tired. The, no, the, the, there's nothing physically mm -hmm. the, the usable, but you get uh, all all the anodizing. You get little scuffs oh, and yeah, bash yeah. marks well, on they're in pretty good nick. I mean, they're from a Jixa K4, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they'll function perfectly yeah. well, it's just aesthetically. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was given them, I was given them as yeah. a take off part, so. I think no with anything, that. you're all. I mean, if you look close enough, you'll probably. You know, or oh, you'll find something wrong with them somewhere. You know, someone at somewhere like little stains. Oh well, and if it's free, mate, you can't argue that. Well, so anyway, that's uh, the disc issue. Let's put that to one side, and we'll look at something you're working on, on just now. As I came through the door. Okay, so here behind Jeff is my new, given to me, uh, ZRX swing arm, ZRX 12 and a swing arm, which was holed, dented, covered in uh, melted plastic and uh, I rescued it, got it fixed up and now hopefully I'm going to use it on my new Z650 stroke 1100 project bike for next year and as part of that just sort of short steps, just small steps to get the thing moving I want to get the back end in here, back wheel in there with the caliper in place and so on and that is what Jeff is working on right now so we go across here and zoom across oh. okay so here in my hand ah. we have the original Oops, there goes another catastrophe. Another catastrophe, I don't bloody really know. It's right, all okay. these traps are set, you yeah, see. Okay, we'll start again. And here in my hand we have the little single pot Brembo, brand new. That mm -hmm. was fitted to my 127 drag well, bike, which is no longer there. required. And there is its original mount. Now that mount I can't really use again because I don't like it. It's got holes in it I don't like. It's a bit too short. So what we're going to do today, or just do today, rather, is to make a replica of that without all the holes in it. And also a little bit longer. Well, we've got to have holes in it. Oh yeah, yeah, one hole. <laughs> I mean, not I these. Um, yeah. Well, we've had, we've got our twenty mil. Not these speed holes yeah. here. I don't For know. our new spindle, because like that. that's three quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Which, that's three quarters, and these are twenty mil. That one won't go through. No, no. I believe that's twenty mil, is it? Uh, that we've got. Uh, I used a twenty mil milling cutter, yeah, and it's yeah. a night. No, right. Okay, great stuff. Now I do, we don't have yet. I did that just before you the got correct it. spindle for the swing arm. It'll be the same as that, but, but probably a little bit longer. About yeah. another twenty mil longer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have looked on on um, eBay, but I've not found one yet. Yeah. There's none for sale. I think that's so. a ZZR 1100. That one. Okay. It, it's, well, the, it's a twenty mil. So that's fine. It, yeah, I think there's well the ZX R is it, is it ZX R12? That is yeah yeah. ZRX12. ZRX. ZRX. Not ZXR. Yeah, ZRX. Different. Anyway. Right. So that's what you're doing today. Well, we I've, I've now got this. What I need to do because that's three quarters. Yeah. I'm gonna have to make a little. Pin up to go in there to hold it while I get the shape. Mark the caliper, the mark these two. Yeah. So I know they're in. Yeah. But like you said, we want to come about another 20 15, mil. 20 mil yeah, longer. Yeah. So yeah. I've left that. Yeah. From there to For get the time being. to put our new hole. So once you've done that, you can get it on the middle and. Uh, well, once I've done that, I can just whip round it, and yeah. it's it's, it's, it's done. done. Yeah. yeah. I've one set everything up. There one little job, admittedly, it. but it should. Uh, it's just one small little step. For mankind. For mankind. One. Since it's currently July the whatever it is, 17th, we're on the moon mission at the moment from 50 years ago. Yeah, so that's what's going on right now. And um, let's see what else you've been up to. Okay, so you might have noticed here things are a bit different. Uh, the, the yokes and the forks are not there anymore on the uh, comp bike because you're making some changes, which are what exactly? Well, we started off, we were going to put that ZX, I bought that ZX. 12 
It is a ZXR12 oh, yeah, upside yeah. down front okay. end, wheel, yeah. calipers, everything. Yeah. But on a bike now that's starting to look as though it was done in the 80s, yeah, it, it looks wrong. It doesn't look right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I, I'll keep that and if someone yeah. buys it then it'll yeah. give them money. Okay. So yeah. I thought I might as well go back to just using the ordinary... Upside, well, standard. Well, st what people would Not say is standard, down. yeah. Forks. Uh, and that's where those forks come in, I've just shown you, because hopefully they might go on this bike. And then, and then fancy billet centred discs are going to be used, but they may end up going on something, something else. else. Yeah, you've got some homemade discs <laughs> yeah. as well. And next to this wheel here, which is off a R1, is it? That's the 1200 oh, ZR. Z Z ZR, same, same difference. Uh, ZXR. ZRX. ZRX. Yeah. Oh. And, ne and next to it is uh, one of your billet wheels from a long time ago. Yeah. Built it up. And you were saying you might use this instead, or do you use it for something anyway? Or do well, some more work on it, machine out the spokes a little bit more? The thing is with it, I've only got the one. Oh, right, okay. And if to make another one, a back one, I'm thinking that would be better off in here because there's more chance of selling that back wheel yes, or use than, something than, else. Uh, than that because if someone's going to put that in a bike, they're going to want a matching back one. Yeah. So, so it, what was this made for originally? It was made for this. Oh, right, okay. It so was in it originally. So you can put it back so on So it's again. going back in, yeah. But you want to make and funnily it... enough, them forks were what were on it originally. Oh, I know, it's been such a long time, I don't know, it's been years yeah. and years and years, things get taken off, put mm. back on again, swapped around, I don't bloody know, I lose count. But what's interesting is down here, you know, I can drag it up. Your wheel. This is my wheel. For the uh, this is a front wheel for my new project, and if you compare the two, they're quite similar except that's kind of um, I don't know, handy this a little bit. It's been made so that the spokes come off at yes, a tangent. Yeah. But I, I was looking at it and I got the marker pen out and I blanked them and I prefer them like a die mag now. I oh, think it, oh, okay. I've, this tangent thing. It, You're going off it. You're going to have to add I, I might mill it because I wanted to hollow them out and I thought, well, should I just do it so it's. And can you still do that? Have you enough meat yeah, there's those enough. Spots? There is actually oh, enough. Um, so you can remill it and, and I can remill it so it looks. A bit more like this one. Yeah. Except this one, as I say, has got um, these indentations machined in them. Which well, is, that basically, that's, you might that's what I want to do to that, yeah. yeah. There's a bit of weight. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about these wheels here, there's the front, the rear's down there. Um, this is a bolt up, it's still a bolt up. Uh, under these bolts and, and the rims will come off and leave this centre separate along with the hubs. So what I could do is take it apart and have it anodised, painted or something like that or whatever. But I can't do that with the rear. because well, you could. Well I could, but it'd be very difficult. Well, and I'll show you why. Well. Okay, so here's the rear wheel. I've already seen that before recently. And um, I can't take this one apart as I can this one at the back, rather the front wheel, because this one's been welded up. I got so tired of trying to make it airtight, we was getting leaks, a few all kinds of areas here. Took it apart, put it back together again, took it apart, still leaked, still leaked. So in the end, I just got sick of it. So I had Jeff the welder weld the rims inside to the centre so it can't leak anymore. But it also means I now can't take it apart anymore. Which isn't really a well, problem. Well, we could mill the weld oh, away. God. Yeah, or you could machine could, it away. That's a lot of work, so I'm not going to do that. But what I could do, what we could do, is take the hubs off and do something with them, anodise them or whatever, paint them, paddock coat them who knows, and um, mask off the rim from, from this centre here and either paint the rim and leave that alone or paint this and leave this alone. And at the moment I'm thinking, uh, leave the rim polished, makes life a lot easier when it comes to changing tyres and keeping the thing chip free, and then do something with these hubs and the centre. Can't anodise it because you can't take the thing apart. Powder coating it, yes you could do that, but there's a limited range of colours or whatever with powder coating. So what I'm thinking of doing is just two pack it. We'll just um, very carefully. Do you know what would look good? Because it's welded. Take all the screws out. Yeah. And paint it into the corner. Yes, yeah, you could do that. And then put the screws back in, so, so it's got silver yeah, yeah. on the colour. Yeah. So you got contrast. So that's, you've got a contrast. Yeah, that's also a possibility. Um, so yeah, we could, we could do that. We're still thinking about that. I mean, don't forget, this is my 2020 project, guys. There's going to be a lot of changes along the way. I may not even use these wheels on the final bike. Who Knowing knows? you, you probably said I've had enough. Had enough. Yeah. I want, spoke, I want uh, retro spoke wheels instead. Oh, but these I had, so we can use them. And so, if you think about it, this is left nice and shiny, alloy rim. Centres could be black or blue or red or who knows, gold, gold, bronze that matches up with the colour of the rest of the bike. But not side that yet. But anyway, this is a bloody nice wheel, pretty light for the size of the thing. And it does fit quite nicely in that ZRX swing arm. And that's what Jeff's now working on in making sure this thing fits that swing arm 
I've got the caliper mount sorted out, spacer sorted out, and so on. So that's, that's what's going on right now. And then we lap one away. Oops. What we've got here is the front again. And this has got a slight problem because when it was made, it's actually made out of the rim of an Astrolite wheel, which was damaged. Yeah, the centre was damaged. And Astrolite's been... now worth a bloody fortune, like a thousand pounds to buy a new one. But what Jeff did very cleverly was cut it out and then drill out the rivets that hold it all together and then reuse those holes for bolts. Mm -hmm. What's also clever is, I don't know if you notice this, but there are no nuts visible here and no nuts visible on that side. And that's because all these holes are blind holes that have been threaded by Jeff, which must have taken hours and hours and hours to, to keep it looking nice and neat and tidy. The, the screw heads from the other are in between, uh, between the two yeah. them, yeah, so you've you actually work. threaded the billet yeah. centre. Yeah, a lot of work that. Uh, a nut and bolt through, it's okay on a car because you don't see the back. No. Ooh, well, on a bike, it, yeah. it, it, I think a nut and bolt looks Well, the wheels on my, unfinished. On my Harley, on yeah. market Harley, really, that's built out that way. Although they are titanium nuts. So like that's Unless you get like a fancy nut, you can it actually is, get a nut. Fancy. It's a 12 pointer, so yeah, it's actually quite fancy. It doesn't look bad, anyway, it matches the, the each point side, is, yeah. This originally was gold, but it had been painted black over the years, and God knows what it... So we blasted it to get the finish off, which ended up giving me this very kind of rough, textured rim. And it's going to need polishing, because otherwise it looks look stupid mm -hmm. against the polished rim of the back. I'm not looking forward to doing that, so Jeff has kindly suggested if we take the tyre off, we can mount the whole thing on your... You could clamp it on there and yeah. just hold some wet and dry on it and yeah, actually and do it by hand. Yeah, yeah. So that's some polish it, yeah. Do it, at some point in the future. Yeah. What also I don't want to do is polish up these centres because it would take hours and hours and hours to polish I them. I think up. they'd look better painted. Yeah. And also to keep them polished, of course, with the big discs in place, you can't really access these hubs. So I think we are going to go for polished rims, painted or powder coated centres and hubs. Not sure what colour yet. Gold, bronze, black, blue, pink, who knows? Depends on the. Uh, colour of the bike when we're done. So yeah, that's currently what's going on. Small steps, one small step for one mankind and all that. It's all done. For my 2020 project. And we've pointed out the frame before, but soon hopefully, perhaps it's now middle of July, perhaps by the end of July, Jeff will have the frame jig in here. <laughs> Get the Honda done, and then we can do my Kawasaki and get it put back together. Well, I'll have to start. I'll do your frame because yeah. that'll be uh, okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And now I think it's time for tea. Oops. Tea. Come in oh, here. Definitely time. For yeah. Tea. Click then. Okay, Jeff. Here we are again. A few days later, the heat waves over. It's now raining outside again, which is fine by me because I hate the heat. Persistently. Yeah. Persisting. Yes. And what we've got here is these fork legs from my old. 127 drag bike, you've now fit the, it to your... And they were originally original. on this to yeah. start with. <laughs> They've gone back on these yokes. Yeah. Not got, the original yokes right, that were okay. on it. Oh God. You've and still got them, yeah. There's that um, rebuilt and blasted um, caliper. caliper. I've got two, but I still yeah. can't find the other one. God knows where it's gone, but I'll dig it out. And you were hoping, hoping, the, that we can get that, brackets. In, get that in shot. Mm. These brackets here are to uh, mount a cross piece, or two cross pieces. Very old fashioned fork brace. Yeah. And um, Old so you're hoping to just use these because these are hopefully the yeah. same or very similar fork legs. But guess what? You're telling me they don't fit quite right. Well, they're six milli on mounts the for putting on. Yeah. Uh, couldn't have been the other way around oh. where I could have opened them out. Oh, yeah. oh so they're eight. The the, the, the one the, the they're eight originally. Yeah. Uh, and they're six. But the thing is, if you take them out to eight, they've also moved the positions of the fork. Yeah, let's so just go around. Show me that again. Well, if you get that more or less in line, yeah. oh, there's, see, there's the at mounts least are an different. inch, possibly a bit more difference the mounts. in the height Weird. of the mount. I wonder why they did that. So if you now did use that, it would push it, this up by an inch. It'll work, the but then, it, then, then, then it's too tall. It, yeah, looks, yeah. it starts to look yeah. silly. And so instead, okay, so hopefully you can hear us over the sound of the rain outside. And there you've got a spare piece of, what's that, 10 mil? That's plate. 10 mil, yeah. And I see you just made out the, the, the shape there of the new... Um, yeah, the, brace. The, well they're, the, they're, they're the, the same shape as that, they are actually too long, right. they probably want to be about another, like I say, an inch shorter. Oh I see, so you, you've just used yeah. that old one as, as yeah. a template. I just drew around it so I knew, I know they're too long, so I know if I cut it in half there, I know there's, there's enough room. I can get them bolted on there when the wheel and tyre is in, yeah. I mean you want at least half inch clearance, oh, yeah, clearance between yeah. the spaces yeah. and that. Right. Okay so now we've had a cup of tea, I've also spotted this thing that we saw a few days ago when you were welding on the feet. Oh that, yeah. And I see you've now got some wheels on it. Uh, well I was going to put some feet on it and then I 
found some nice smart wheels that have wheel around, yeah. fettled up, took my brakes on. And you've been cleaning up the surface, you're going to paint it all green? Yeah, I've just painted, uh, this has all got to be checked the pump, yeah. It works, but what I want to do is clean it out, make sure there's no sludge in it. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, the motor's all been done. Right. Uh, also, so with this going and that going, this is. So I take it these didn't come with that compressor tank, they're all separate. Pieces. Originally, it would have had. This, this isn't the one off it, but it is the same pump that okay. would have been on the tank. And what year is that? It's about what, 1960s? Oh, well, these or? could be from the 60s, okay. yeah. And Maybe the 70s, I don't and think. 60, did you say you've had that rewired? No, it's oh, all been cleaned out. Well, just been cleaned it's out. Like it, but it was running okay. Yeah. But I've, I, I've stripped it, blown everything out, and it, you, you, and hopefully just hopefully so. It'll be okay. You know, you know it's going to work well. Yeah, yeah. I've done the drain tap. What I've got to do next is bring a pipe from. I was going to go into here to put the air in, but then the originally air. it goes in there. Mm -hmm. But they used to put a pipe out here, down yeah. and in, and it looks bloody. It, lo it's it works, also, but it works, it works, but it's bloody. also a bit more yeah. liable to be hit by something. So what it? I was thinking is come down and then put another bend that way oh, and then right. down into it, so yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, but you have a nice looking. Compressor. Uh, yeah. Uh, and all this is so that you can now. Well, with spray. that one going and that one going, I'll have plenty of air to uh, do the painting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great stuff. Plus, it's on wheels, and it'll it'll virtually wheel. Yeah. Out, you know. Okay. 